Greetings, everyone. Here it is, a uh, Wednesday, and uh, during this pandemic, I am missing meeting with church family. But uh, I thought, well, I usually prepare something for Wednesday night, so I thought I'd share a little devotional with you. And it's more of a lesson on uh, Proverbs, as we had been having uh, on Wednesday nights. We've been working through Proverbs all the way from the first verse of chapter one, and we are up to the eighth chapter of Proverbs now. And I thought I would just continue on with just a few verses from that chapter today. Uh, we've been talking about the benefits of wisdom. We've been talking about what, how does it help us? What, what is wisdom, first of all? Well, wisdom is skill in living. It's being able to make good choices, choices that usually result in positive benefits in your life. And uh, we've been discovering the great value of wisdom. Uh, if you have your Bible would get you to turn to it, and uh, I'm looking at the seventh chapter of Proverbs here for a moment, because you remember in this seventh chapter of Proverbs, it was talking about uh, the invitation. It's the invitation from the strange woman, and uh, not that she's weird necessarily, but she's strange, uh, meaning she was enticing, she was offering um, uh, to have adultery, to commit adultery with a man, uh, the son of the one writing here. And he says, my son, he says, this is what I saw when I looked out of my window. He say, he's not saying, I saw you walking. He's saying, I saw a young person walking. And the strange woman was very enticing. She was offering, she was putting herself out there. And we get to the next chapter, chapter 8. And instead of the, the enticement of the strange woman, we have the cry out the same sort of enticement, but from Lady Wisdom. And it's pretty neat to see the contrasts. And I look at it and I, I say, I see lots of things here. Uh, you, you look at chapter 8 and, and, uh, it says in the first verse, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She stands in the top of the high places, by the way, in the places of the past. She cries at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. And she goes on and on to, to entice us to wisdom. Wisdom is being offered to us. It's, it's offered to us freely. Now, I get to um, look at the next few verses, uh, verses 6 to 9, and just looking at those four verses, there was a list of things that we saw about wisdom, the benefits of wisdom, the characteristics of wisdom, right? So verse 6 talks about it. What are the things we see in verse 6 about wisdom? I will speak excellent things. My lips shall be right things. Uh, verse 7, my mouth shall speak truth. Uh, verse 8, all the words of my mouth are righteousness. Verse 9, they are plain or straightforward to him that understands, and they are right to them that find knowledge. And we just saw some characteristics of wisdom. Uh, when we get to verses 10 and 11, we see wisdom is much better than money. I mean, we look at things that we want, and we say, I can make a big list of things that I want. And uh, I got a birthday coming up, and I'm thinking, wow, I could have a few things but I don't really need anything. The Lord's blessed me with everything that I need. And, but we could, you know, in our greed, think, wow, I could have this. If I had this money, then I could get this. And if I had, you know, maybe I should work an extra job. Maybe I should work an extra job to the, to the 
um, detriment of my family, time with, that I need with my family, time that I need in my church, time that I need to serve the Lord. And uh, we want to be careful that we have a good balance. But, but wisdom here is much better than money, much better than precious things. Because it says here in verse 10, it says, Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. See how great wisdom is portrayed for us here in this eighth chapter? It's better than anything, any money or precious thing that we could want. Wisdom is better. Well, how can wisdom be so incredibly helpful to us? And I want to look at some earthly benefits of wisdom. And, and the one I want to look at tonight is wisdom's ability to help us lead. We're not all leaders. Um, though each of us has opportunities to lead. Uh, not everyone is going to be a, a pastor. Not everyone is going to be a Sunday school teacher. Not everyone is going to, to be a leader like that. We're all made in, uh, different. God made each of us differently, and each of us have different gifts, and that's good. We're to use the gifts that God has given to us. But each of us has the ability to lead in some way. Um, some of us should take the opportunity to lead others spiritually, even if it's just by our example. Just living the way that you should as an example to others. And that can be, in a sense, a way of leading. Others are leading in public ways, like teaching a class, like leading a lecture, like preaching, like standing up in church and praying before a congregation. Spiritual leadership of various kinds. How are we to be good leaders? How is wisdom helpful to you to be that kind of good leader? Well, that's what I want to look at in the verses here from verses 12 to 16. I'll just read it, and then I'll preach through these, these four verses, five verses. Verse 12, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way. And the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. How does wisdom help? What are her benefits? Well, the very first verse there that I read, verse 12 says, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. So there's some words there that we could discuss and define. And, and uh, the first one is prudence. Prudence is simply being shrewd. It's, it's, it's being able to, to form a plan and then being able to make that plan happen, make it work out. Um, let's say we had um, a six-year-old here and He's wanting to learn how to tie his shoes. He's at school. All the other kids have learned to tie their shoes. And he's been stuck with the Velcro. And he wants to have shoes with laces. So he gets a pair, but he can't tie them. He has to have his mommy tie them for him. So he wants to be able to learn how to tie his shoelaces. You know, what is he going to do? He's going to have somebody teach him how to do it. Of course, nowadays, even a six-year-old is going to turn to YouTube and gather information, right? So anyways, he, he, he learns you've got to grab those two laces and just pull. I mean, what's the purpose of laces anyways? It's to make sure your shoes are on tight enough so that they're not going to fall off when you're running around. And so he's got to pull those two laces up to tighten it. And then he's got to follow the steps to get that shoe lace uh, tied. And he's got to come up with a plan to get it done and then, and then be able to bring that plan to fruition. This is prudence, okay? And just a little illustration of, of prudence. It's coming up with a plan, being able to work it out. The next word in the verse is knowledge, right? It's information. If you want to make a decision, 
what you need to do is gather all the bits of information that you can so that you can make the best decision possible. Uh, and information is needed for wisdom, but it's not enough on its own. Now, back to my illustration of tying your shoes, right? You need knowledge. You need to figure out how it is. You need to say, Mom or Dad uh, or a friend, can you spend time showing me how to do this? You, you need to maybe just click on YouTube and watch a few times uh, how to tie those laces, right? It's gathering information. It's gathering knowledge, which is the word we're discussing. And you need this knowledge to make wise decisions. Uh, it helps a person to rule, to lead rightly. All right, so first word was prudence, second word is knowledge, and it talks about witty inventions. Simply put, discretion. It's, it's being able to think. It's being able to mull around things in your head, to, to think internally. The cool thing about wisdom and practicing how to live rightly how to have wisdom, which is skill in living, is that the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Back to the illustration of the shoelaces for a second, right? If that boy, he learns to tie his shoes, and he has to concentrate really hard at first, even after he's not, he doesn't have to watch the videos anymore, right? He, he's, he knows, but he still has to concentrate really hard. And then eventually, he does it enough times, it's just muscle memory. It just happens, you know, things are flipping real fast, done. And that's the way it is in our lives. You know, when we practice living right, it becomes easier. With the Lord's help, of course. Now the 13th verse says, The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. So we know that the, the proverb says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And here in this verse it says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. To hate evil. Which, and you notice the progression here. You, you hate evil, which is often manifested in pride. And often proud people act in ways that seem arrogant, right? And to cover their arrogance, they're going to say things that are wrong. This is the froward mouth that we see there. So these are things that we've got to hate. Did you know that you're supposed to hate? The Bible tells you to hate. Uh, it's not necessarily telling you to hate people. It's telling you what to hate. Things to hate. Hate evil. Hate pride. Hate arrogancy. Um and the evil way. And we've got to learn to hate these things. Next, notice the positive things that, that wisdom gives for leading. Look at the 14th verse. Counsel. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. So the benefit of it in, in, in being able to be a good leader is counsel from, from the Lord. Counsel is mine. You're going to be able to give counsel too. You're going to be able to receive and give sound wisdom. And this is talking about the leaders who, who's able to make wise plans. What you do, what you do need to be a good leader is counsel and wisdom to make wise decisions. And wisdom is needed for this. Uh, being able to make a wise decision is fine, but you also need to be able to implement it. And that's why this... The bottom part of verse 14, the second half of the verse, says, I am understanding. I have strength. And wisdom promises the ability to make wise decisions, set goals, implement those goals in a way that honor the Lord. I am understanding, it says. It also gives us the power, right? It says, I have strength. That's power. And the things mentioned in verse 14 are so important for anyone in leadership. Could you imagine, just for a minute, a military leader, and the military leader wants to help the country, but he has no goals. He has no plans. You know what's going to happen? No success. Right? How would he even know what success looks like if he has no goal? You can't be a good leader if you don't believe in setting goals. Well, these are things I'm learning. Hopefully you're learning. 
imagine the leader now stick to current events here for a minute imagine the leader of a country who wants to stop a bunch of protests that are going on in his country he has no idea how to handle the situation he has no plans to make sure it doesn't ever happen again and in my opinion and I'm not the leader of Canada uh, you would want to enforce the law when it comes to protesters who are breaking the law. And, and then you would want to make sure that there's no other protesters who's going to want to do the same thing by increasing the severity of the consequences, right? So uh, you break the law, this is the consequences, and you're going to deter future repetitions of the same problem. And also making sure people from other countries who want to come into Canada pr to protest, saying, shut Canada down, are never allowed in the country again. Seems like wise decisions to me. Um, well, people are left questioning our leadership of our country because of poor abilities to lead. Poor abilities to come up with a plan. Poor abilities to implement the plan. And it's going to happen again. And I realize I've just spoken against our leadership. And I don't enjoy doing that. But it seems an appropriate illustration of being able to make wise decisions and implement them for success. Let me soften that judgment by saying something nice about our Prime Minister. Uh, over the last two weeks, I've been impressed with how he is leading our country through this pandemic. He is getting up every morning, getting before the public, and trying to calm people down, trying to help people, trying to uh, trying to help people to see what the problem is and how people can help this problem by wading through waters that we have never been through before. And he's doing much more than I ever expected from him. So, for making wise decisions, you ought to have goals. Uh, for your own personal spiritual growth. Do you know that? You should have a goal. You should set a goal for your own spiritual growth. Do you have a goal? Uh, do you have a plan? How are you implementing that plan to reach your goal? What about your family's spiritual growth? Maybe I can talk to the dads here for a minute. How are you leading your family? What, what are you expecting them to come to? By the time your children reach a certain age... You want to be able to have a goal that you are accomplishing. Um, what is it? Because you can't expect that you're going to succeed in this area if you don't set a goal. You know, it's like building a house, right? What, what if you want to build a house? You're going to get some detailed plans made up. Um, you're going to have um, the ability to get those plans, those blueprints put in motion. You're going to have the, the supplies delivered. You're going to start with this and then this and then this and then this until you build it up and it is what you planned. Ability to maintain the plans so that the project gets finished. That's the idea here. Now, godly people set goals. Wisdom gives us the, the ability to know how to set goals. And... Um, we don't really know what's going to happen this summer, do we? We don't know if uh, we're going to have the freedom to operate as normal this summer. We have plans to have vacation Bible school. Um, three ladies in the church are going to lead this. And, uh, and so you should pray for Sandra, for Sheila, for Rosie. It's up to these leaders to set goals and by God's help and grace to implement them so that this vacation Bible school will be well put together, uh, will be well organized, so that children will come and hear the gospel. This is our hopes. This is our goal. What are we going to do to accomplish this? So we've been setting some steps to accomplish that goal. Pray for us. Pray that uh, the Lord will help us with that. Well, you know, this is the thing. The Lord needs to help us with that. So the, the last two verses... We'll cover them very quickly. It says, By me kings reign, and princes decree justice. By, by me princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. Right? 
by me, it says. And it repeats it, by me. And that tells me something. We need the Lord. Self-sufficiency in any Christian ministry is not good. We want to be, instead of being self-dependent, we want to be God-dependent. God dependent on who? On the perfect leader, God. He is our God. He is the one who's going to help us. He is the one who's going to, to lead us and guide us. He's the one that's going to help us to set good goals and then help us to fulfill those goals. Well, that's what I see here as we look at um, this little section of Proverbs and on, on leadership. And uh, I'm thankful for the Lord who helps us. And I just want to say a word of prayer and uh, let you get on with your day. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, for blessing us with the health that you've given to us. And Lord, if there are some people here who are concerned about that, they're wondering if they're going to maintain their health. Lord, I pray that they would be depending on you and putting their faith firmly on you. And Lord, I pray that uh, you would strengthen us, that we would find wisdom wherever we can through the preaching of the word, through our time in the word, through rubbing shoulders with spiritual people, uh, talking about your word, all sorts of ways where we can uh, read and listen and, and learn and gain wisdom from your word. Thank you for the technologies of the day which help us with this. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I want to leave you with Aaron's blessing. He was to say this to the people of Israel. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.